Okay, so let's talk about plumbing your sump. Okay, everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you could, do me a favor, hit that like button, subscribe button, ring the bell notification so you know when I upload a video. I would deeply appreciate it. It does help the channel and it uh, encourages me to do more videos. So if you could, that would be greatly appreciated. So in this video, I wanted to talk about getting the water to and from a sump. So I've done a couple of videos in the past about DIY sumps, one about the tank downstairs, which I'll check out here in a minute, and one for this tank sitting behind me. And in the comments for those videos, several people wanted to know more about how to plumb your sump. So essentially, uh, the overflow that's going to help take water down to the sump and then pumping the water back into the tank itself and the primary issue there is wanting to know how not to overfill your sump in the event of a power outage or whatever the case might be that you lose power so uh, in the interest of time I did not cover those things in those videos I hope this video isn't too long but this is a bit of a complex complex subject and I do understand why people want to know more about this because it is probably one of the more important things to consider when you're setting up a sump. So the first thing you want when you're thinking about plumbing a sump is you need an overflow. This is a DIY, DIY homemade overflow that I made a couple of years ago when I was planning the tank downstairs. I obviously didn't end up using this and I'll tell you why in a minute. But you can look up videos on how to make something similar to this. It essentially has two U-tubes that push the water over. So the water comes in the weir here, overflows in, comes over the U-tubes, and then empties down through a, a tube right here. I didn't end up using this one. It does actually work. Uh, but it does not handle that many gallons per hour and it would not handle the gallons per hour that my pump was putting out. Um, so I essentially wasted my time making this. But if you do have a low gallon per hour tank, you can use something like this. It is a little difficult to prime it, um, but, but it will work. And uh, you can look up a video on how to make this. So there's a couple of ways that you can go about doing this. Uh, well, there's many ways you can go about doing this, but I'm going to show you two of the primary ways by explaining how this tank is plumbed and how the tank downstairs is plumbed. So stand by. All right, so we'll start this little tutorial about some plumbing here in the fish room with the mixed cichlid tank. So I've made videos about this sump. You can check out in the description below. Um, but essentially on this tank, this is the overflow. This is one type of overflow. If you don't want to drill your tank, which I know seems daunting, but in reality isn't really that hard, you can go with an overflow like this one that has a U-tube. So the water spills through the weir. This is the weir here. And the weir is going to set your water height. So when the power cuts off, the water is only going to drop until it stops spilling over the weir. So when you're determining your sump height, I know the height seems high in this sump, but my sump height is at the top of this thermometer. And when the power cuts off, it does not overfill from there. That is sufficient enough in this case to prevent the tank, uh, the sump from overflowing when the power cuts off. Now, when you're setting up your tank, you're going to have to figure out by cutting the power off how much water drains and how high the water gets and then you want to set with a marker line or a tape line whatever it is set your height your water height for your sump to account for whatever excess water comes down from your overflow into your sump when the power cuts off so that's pretty straightforward the weir is going to set the height and determine how much water will spill over and fill the sump up a little bit extra. Now, if you don't want to drill your tank and you're wanting a YouTube type overflow like this one, this is an eShops, which I recommend eShops. They make good stuff. This one has a little uh, divider 
that keeps water in this portion of the overflow. So if the power does cut off, this U-tube is underwater on both sides. What that means is when the power kicks back on, this overflow is just going to keep going. Uh, it won't unprime. If you have one that will drain and empty this U-tube, if the power kicks back on, it's just going to push all the water out of the sump into the tank and overfill the tank. So make sure if you get one like this that this U-tube stays submerged on both ends so that the overflow stays primed. That's very important. If you get an eShops version like this one and they make several other versions, not a big deal. It will stay self-primed. I also made a little lid for it myself. Technical difficulties just to cut down on the noise ever so slightly. So this sump was built on a budget so I was trying to be as frugal as possible which is not going to be the case with the one I'm going to show you upstairs on the saltwater tank. Um, it does a really good job of filtering this tank. The tube from the overflow is just an eShops flexible tube that comes into the sump. Very simple, very straightforward. On the other end, this is where the pump is. This is just a flexible kitchen sink line that I picked up from Lowe's. <clears throat> that goes from the pump here to the output which I made myself. This is just some sort of barbed fitting I found at Lowe's that fit onto this perfectly. I drilled into the frame, the plastic frame right here and used a zip tie. Yes, I used a zip tie just to secure this right here. This output sits above the water. Why is that important? Well, if your power kicks off and this nozzle is below your water line, however far down that is, the water is going to back siphon down into the sump and overfill it. That's why in this case, I just put the nozzle above the water. You can see it's ever so slightly above. That means if the power kicks off, I don't have to worry about that because it's sitting above the water, it doesn't back siphon, and nothing comes down the output tube into the sump. Now there's other ways you could do this. Some people prefer to have their nozzle under the water and pointing in directions, and that's totally fine. Some people drew a little holes right above the water line or right below the water line so that if the power cuts off, the siphon is broken by the little holes that you drill above the water line or maybe slightly below the water line. Keeping in mind that if it's slightly below the water line, it's going to back siphon until it hits the point where the little holes are and the siphon is broken. So this is one way to do it. Stand by and I'll show you the next. Trudy! Okay, so the plumbing situation in this tank is a little more complex, but the fundamental, the fundamentals, are the same. Like the other tank, we have an overflow with a weir right here. So the same principle applies when the power is cut off. The water will only drain as high as the weir overflow and will stop there. This overflow is a little more complex in that it is directly plumbed through the tank. It's covered in salt creep, but this one is drilled and attached directly to the tank, which is obviously safer because there is no YouTube and there's less chance of failure. Likewise, the output on this tank is a little more complex in that in this tank it is drilled and we have a standard output nozzle going in two directions. So when the power is cut off, this will back siphon. So if you didn't have any way to prevent that, the water is going to drain until it reaches that level, which in my case would overflow the sump. However, if we come down here, 
this output has a check valve which is spliced in to the plumbing right there. In the event that the power is turned off or, or is disrupted for any reason, the flap flapper for or whatever it's called inside that check valve will close and the water will not drain and overfill the sump. Likewise in this sump, this sump has two chambers. The water level on this side is high where the water comes down. And then it spills over to this side where the water level is set right here. And the main reason that that's so low in this one is because it's set for the, for the skimmer's performance. But it also allows plenty of room uh, for water to spill back into the sump when the power is turned off and this sump never overflows. So I hope that helped everybody uh, get a little more information on how to prevent the sump from overflowing. If you have any questions or any ideas for something that would you would want me to discuss, please leave those down in the comments below. As always, thank you for watching. Say hi to Chimbo and bye to Chimbo. Bye Chimbo. Bye bye for now.